What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel. So in this video we will be discussing the subject of how do you perfectly flatten walls using nothing but a plastering trowel. Yes, it seems that in the plastering world that we live in right now, uh, the thing that really has taken uh, the trade by storm is things like speed skims or spatulas to flatten your work. Yes, it makes life so much easier. Certainly as a company, it's something that we use on a daily basis to get that really nice flat finish. But does that mean then that you can't get nice, flat, smooth walls just using a plastering trowel? Well, you'd be pleased to know, especially for those that don't have a speed skim or a spatula, that you still can get that lovely finish just using a trowel. So in this uh, video, we are gonna show you how we go about getting that nice flat finish just using a 13 or a 14 inch plastering trowel. So we hope you enjoy the video, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing. But for the job that we are on today, you can see here behind me, possibly in the shot, uh, that we are plastering these two alcoves and the chimney breast. So they're relatively small sections of wall. It's pretty easy to get them nice and flat without the use of a speed skim. So we're gonna show the process of how we go about getting them flat just using that plastering trowel. But to start with, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on applying that first coat of plaster. So let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so when it comes to flattening the plaster, if you can believe it, the most important thing is to actually get your uh, first and second coat on properly, nice and neat. Now these are going on old plaster walls, they've been PVA twice, but I know this is gonna go quickly. So I'm gonna have to apply this very, very neatly. The easiest way to do this is actually to try and apply the plaster relatively thin, but also as long a strokes as you possibly can. So because I'm six foot two, I'm quite tall, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right at the bottom, just fill the bead out first, so when you're feeling, filling the bead out, just wipe it onto the bead, like so. Just trying to drop as little down the bead as, as you possibly can. It's very easy when you're plastering beads for stuff to, to drop off it. So try and wipe the plaster onto the bead. So it's essentially cleaning your trowel off. That way it'd be a lot cleaner. Okay, so now these beads are done. Gonna start from the bottom. And a nice long stroke. I'm pushing quite hard to get the plaster nice and flat. So again, nice long reach. Like so. So you're trying to keep it as neat and as tidy as possible. Same again on this one. So we're going to wipe it up the bead. Just so it's not to drop too much. Drag down to the top. And then again, bottom corner. We're really pushing that plaster into the corner. And it's all about keeping it nice and neat. Now I know this is gonna dry fast. So pretty much as soon as I've got it on, I'm gonna to wanna to go and flatten it. Same again, into the corner, right at the bottom. And I'm just gonna push that plaster nice and neat. Like so. These ceilings there. 2.6 high, I think. I uh, can get most of the way up. Okay. 
Okay so, okay, so then when it comes to the top, I'm just going to pull down from the top, almost imitating the exact dot of it of what you've done below. Just kind of try and keep it nice and flat. Now this is unsurprisingly pulled in very very fast, so what we're going to do is we are going to flatten this now. So, but to flatten it, what we're going to do is we're going to just pull down, because this is going between two beads, we're going to go in the direction that the beads are going in. So pull down, and then as we're on a hop up, we need the high ceilings going to pull back up like so. The same with this one here, it's against the bead, so I'm going to pull down, back up, just to make sure that bead stays nice and square, and then I'm going to go into the corner and just pull out, like so. Just to get that corner nice, I'm going to go straight back down again. On this section of wall here, because I applied it up and down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it side to side. So I'm going to go the opposite way, the side to side, like so. So the opposite way that I applied the plaster. Okay, and then the bottoms, what we're going to do, same again, we're going to do nice long strokes. Try and fill out any low spots that there might be. Nice long strokes. About a 30 degree or so angle on your trowel, because you're looking just to almost skim the top of the plaster off. So we're going to start at the bottom and pull up in the middle, hence the edge there. A little bit of a low spot there. Just going to fill that out. Then we go at the bottom. We're just gonna go, just gonna go side to side. I say. I'm just gonna do that side to side just to start flattening that plaster in. The opposite way that we apply the plaster. Okay, so these walls now have had their first coat, they've been flattened in with uh, a trowel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up straight away just because these walls are pulling in quickly. As mentioned, they're on old plaster. And we're gonna catch up when we start applying that second coat. So we'll catch up at that point. Okay, so we are now at the point where we're gonna apply the second coat of plaster. Um, off camera, I've already done uh, the tops just to make things a little bit easier for me. But we're going to do exactly the same as we've done last time. Nice, long strokes. Just be careful against the bead, because the bead is pretty much filled out now. It, uh, it's more likely to drop stock off the edge of it. 
We're going to do nice, long strokes, trail, nice and flat. I'm going to go as long and as high as we can reach. Make sure that beam's nice and filled out. It's the same with all the other walls. The nice, long, flat strokes. You want very little angle on the trowel. What I'm going to do is we're just going to go sideways just to fill out the corner. Just make sure there's enough plaster in it. And I'm going to drag up very carefully. Really looking to push that plaster nice and firm into that first coat. Try and keep your trowels, trowel marks as neat as you can. Okay, so these walls now have had their second coat of plaster. What I'm gonna do now is just leave these just to pull in a little bit. Uh, so that uh, to the stage where essentially your fingers are digging in, but it's still got a slightly slimy texture at that point. Then we're going to run the trowel over again to flatten in those uh, tram lines caused by the trowel when we're applying the plaster. So we'll catch up at that point. Okay, so we are at the point now where we are going to flatten uh, what we've put on now. If I was to run my fingers over the wall, you can see there that it's not digging in, but it's still got a slimy texture to it. That'll tell me that I'll be able to flatten most of this in now without leaving too many tram lines. So what I'm going to do is actually start from the top. Lots of pressure, a relatively shallow angle. And just push down the bead. Just make sure that bead's nice and filled in. Let's like say. So. Pull up. Really start to close that plaster in. Obviously, this is a lot easier to do with a speed skill or a spatula because you can do it an awful lot earlier. But if you haven't got one, you just have to wait a little bit before you can flatten it. So that bit there is done. And then the same here on the side. What I'm going to do is just make sure that corner's filled out. I'm going to run the toe down. And then just pull out from the corner. Like so. Now the tops are done, we can do the same as the bottom. We're going to just pull up from the bottom to the top. We're applying a lot of pressure here just to really push that plaster in nice and flat. Because we've allowed this to pull in, it takes very little work to get it flat. If you were to try and do this and the plaster was still too wet, you would just be getting tram lines everywhere. Okay, so these walls now have been flattened in after the second coat. Now, uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to leave this to the point where we can do our first wet trowel. Uh, there is no need to compress the plaster like you would if you'd used a spatula. The reason being is because obviously we've allowed this plaster to pull right in. So it's already significantly drier than if we'd flatten it with a spatula. So we're gonna catch up at that point when we are yet further flattening these walls at the point of the wet trowel. Okay, so we are now at the point where we are going to do our first wet trowel on a wall. So we have flattened down with a plastering trowel. Now, what we're gonna do again, because this is between two beads, we're still gonna keep pulling down 
following the line of the bead. Let's have lots of pressure. And a reasonable angle to try and cut that plaster. Same again, pull up from the top. To the right of me here, I've done it off camera, but doing the reveal here, or the side of the uh, Alco, sorry. I'm gonna, again, pull down with the bead, just to make sure it's nice and sharp. And then in the corner, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the toe, and then pull down. But again, Like so, and then pull out from the corner, like so. against the bead. Like so. Okay, we're going for lots of pressure. Reasonable angle because we're trying to cut that plaster back. is at this point they should now be gone okay so we are now at the point of the second wet trail now for the first wet trail we went up and down and for the second wet trail what we're going to do is we're going to go side to side uh, don't pay any attention to the fact I've changed the trail uh, Louis who is used is now using the trail I was uh, using um, for the seed and that's the only reason why I'm now using this for Fina. Um, otherwise, I'd be using the other one. But to go side to side, what we're going to do, run the nose in the top like that. Again, down B. And then side to side. Now, this is a lot harder going between two beads. But to get it flat, we need to go both sides. It's going to be lots of pressure. Also doesn't help that there is a bed in the way. The downside to doing a domestic job. You have to work with what you've got. And lots of pressure. side to side. It's 
technique is the same we've used for all the walls all the way around. Unfortunately, I can't get a good enough camera angle to show the other walls. Those other walls have already received uh, their second wet trail. So basically, what we've done is pretty much the opposite of what we did on the first wet trail. We've gone the opposite way on the second wet trail. Doing this you know, guarantees that you can really start to get those walls flat because we are troweling both ways. So really the final thing to do is one, drive past, which we'll do uh, shortly, and we'll catch up at that point. Okay, so we are now going to do the final uh, pass on this wall, which is gonna be a dry pass. What I'm gonna use is our carbon steel trowel. Keep the trowel nice and wet, and then just pass the trowel over the wall, like so. Again, going the opposite way to the last trowel that I've just done, which was side to side. So this one will be up and down, like so. Just keeping that trowel nice and clean. Now anyone normally follows our channel will know that normally we use the plastic for this stage, but I don't. Uh, it's actually damaged. I need to fix it. I'm just got a bit of a nick in it. So instead I'm gonna use the carbon. So if I was to show you as I come around onto the light, so that really is the end of the video. Now you would have seen as we glanced across uh, the chimney brush, you've seen obviously that wall is fairly uh, polished now. That is what happens when you use a steel or a carbon steel trowel to do that final dry pass. It's actually one of the reasons why we use plastic, not the steel. It isn't particularly necessary, <coughs> but um, it is considered a general standard in plastering to do a final dry pass. Um, but as you can see, uh, they've come very uh, come out very flat. Um, obviously, it's not quite so visible on the sides, but they look about the same as the front of the chimney breast. So you'll just have to take my word for it. But hopefully um, this video has really shown you how you can still produce nice uh, flat plastered walls just using your trowel, not using these modern tools like speed skins, which admittedly do make your life an awful lot easier. It is a bit quicker, saves a bit of strain on your body. For us, we'll be switching back to just using a trowel and not a speed skim. Of course we won't. Um, at the end of the day, we believe as plasterers to try and produce as best quality job we can with the least amount of work. And a speed skim does that. But for those that possibly don't have those uh, tools to hand, uh, as long as you apply your plaster neat and also give yourself, uh, you know, some time just let that plaster pull in so that you can take out those tram lines caused by uh, the trowel. There's no reason why you can't churn out really nice, lovely looking walls. We hope this video has been helpful. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.